before he gave that order, how was the smoke? Before he gave, when, the, four, when, the, first pri when the first five prisoners came out, it wasn't that much of a smoke. Okay. But when the order was given, the smoke escalated. Okay, continue, please. I then observed Mr. Holligan locked the door, and Mr. Samuels ordered all the officers to come down, which they did. The firefighter brought the fire hose into the yard and for some reason <coughs> the joint of the hose got slipped out. And the by the time they could have got control of the hose, the water was finished. Okay. So the fire service nor the prison official couldn't have have access to water to put a fire out. I've then noticed the inmates from the uh, old capital division kicked the wall out. This is after the water was finished? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And they went over with the pails and the buckets of water that they kept in the evolution area. And Do you know the inmates who came out to help? Not by name. Okay. By faces. By faces. Okay. Yes, and it's not <coughs> a prisoner that I normally associate with, so I, okay. I couldn't answer you that oh, question. Yes, continue, please. So they came out with the buckets of water? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I then observed the prison official took an arm. So where, where did they go with the, with the buckets of water? Which part of? Over to, the, over to the capital A division. The front door? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. okay. there was only like about a feet and a half <coughs> from where they broke the wall to get over on the landing of the capital A division. Okay. You could have just stepped over. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've then noticed the prison official took a steel cutter and they cut the door, the capital A division door. Yes. They marked the door, yes. I would say. And then, from the time they could have put the little bit of rest to fire out, I guess that was in there, those prisoners and was already dead. Why do you think they were already dead? Because no one didn't come out alive. So at the time when they were throwing the buckets, the inmates were throwing the water, did you hear any inmates in the cell at the time? Before. You heard? I heard the inmates are saying, open the door, spray some water. And at the time when the officer was trying to <coughs> open the door now with the, the saw or the, the, the machine, Yeah. were you hearing inmates too? No. Okay. No, I didn't hear back then. So you assumed that they were already dead. dead? Yeah. Okay. And after that, what happened after the officer tried to open the door with the machine? Did you observe anything? I observed a few inmates went in. Mm -hmm. And they came back out. So when the officer uh, saw it open the door, it, it opened? Nah, yeah, it, it, yeah, it opened, but after the fire was, after those men was already <coughs> there. So help me to understand. After the officer, the person would have used the machine to saw the, the lock or the, the door. door. Yeah. What exactly happened after you finished sawing the, the, the lock, the door? Did Prison. you observe anything? Prisoners went in with, with waters. So they opened the door, they got the door open, yeah. push it open. Yeah. Okay, and the prisoners went in with the water. Yeah. So those same prisoners with the bucket that yeah. came, they didn't get to throw that, the buckets of water at that time when they came out? You couldn't have thrown the water from the outside. So they had to wait until the door was yeah. open. There's no way you could have thrown the water from the outside because the way how the, the um, there is a um, steel plate with just small holes, okay. air holes. Okay, okay. So there's nothing that you could have actually thrown in there or you, uh, something that you could have mm -hmm. thrown out. Okay. You could have thrown in water, but um, not <coughs> to the direction or wherever the fire was because of the angle. Okay, so the inmates went in, they threw water. Yeah. And what happened next? What did you observe? I observed 
Mr. Samuels came closer to my window. Mm. And I told Mr. Samuels, I said, Mr. Samuels, you have already killed a man in prison, in the sanitary confinement, and you leave those men in there to die. Mm -hmm. Mr. Samuels then looked at me in my face, and he immediately exited the yard. Mm -hmm. A few minutes later, I saw the, uh, the, uh, the director, Mr. Carl Graham, and I told Mr. Graham what had took place. But I, I was so upset, and while I was talking to him, Mr. Graham said, okay, calm down and tell me what happened. Mm -hmm. And I told him exactly what happened. Mr. Mm -hmm. Mr. Samuels, stand up and give the order to lock the door for those men to burn. Okay. I also went and told him about Mr. Pilgrim, <coughs> officer in charge. I told him Mr. Pilgrim is not fit for the, to run in this jail. Because I remember back in 2015 of February, Mr. Pilgrim had made an announcement, a general statement to the entire population and go on and say, well, if you got a good disciplinary, this is the jail to be on, which is the Barbies Correctional Facility. But then went on and say, well, if you cannot get along, I will put you in one cell and you will kill each other and I will do the necessary paperwork. Mm -hmm. And I've, uh, I've addressed that. To this Mr. is what you told Mr. Graham? Yeah, Mr. Graham. Mm -hmm. and At Mr. that time? Yeah. And Mr. Graham shook his head and he walked away. And that's the extent of what you observed on March 3rd? The 3rd. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Narain. Council will have a few questions for you. Yeah. Thank you, Chairman. Good morning, Mr. Narai. Morning, sir. I'm Selwyn Peters. I represent the Ghana Prison Service. Yes, sir. I have some questions for you. Yeah. Now, in February of 2015, which jail were you housed at? Barbies Correctional Facility. You were housed at Barbies Correctional Facility, and you say that Superintendent Pilgrim made an utterance in respect to inmates killing each other? Yes, sir. And you also spoke about Superintendent Pilgrim emphasizing the need for persons in the living unit to get along? Yes, sir. You would agree that the point, any point that Superintendent Pilgrim was making, if your allegation <coughs> is true, is that people need to get along in that living unit. It's jail. You don't, you, you're, you're not in the church. There's situation you deal with every day. Yes, and, there's, and the situations that you're speaking about is situations involving sometimes very violent people. Of course. And you're speaking about situations where some inmates have improvised weapons. Of course. And some of the improvised weapons you would have seen are? Joker. And uh, what is a joker? It made, made out of steel rod, made out of any sort of metal. Yes, you would, see, you would have seen that and you would have seen other, you would have seen razors? Uh, yes, of course. And you've seen scissors? No, I haven't. I haven't, haven't seen, seen scissors. scissors. You've seen the bed housing um, being made into weapons? Yes, I have. Have you seen choppers or cutlasses? I've seen cutlasses in, um, in, 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 <coughs> um, sept, uh, in May the 23rd um, chop in, um, that took place in the Barbies prison. And you've seen, you've seen situations where inmates threaten officers? Yes, sir. You've seen situations where inmates threaten to rape officers? Rape officers? Yes. You, no. You, you've heard that? No. You haven't heard that? No, I, I haven't. I've never seen, while being in prison for the four years, prison threaten officers or, or to try to rape officers. I but you've heard, you, so you say you never heard those threats? I've never heard those threats. Very well, you, but you've heard threats to kill officers? That's common. That is common? That is common in prison. 
and you've heard prisoners threatening to harm officers' families. It's common. It's an everyday basis you hear that. You would agree that in situations like, in situations where officers face threats of the nature of death threats, and inmates have, as you call it, jokers, officer safety would be number one when dealing with inmates. Under circumstance, certain circumstances. Officer safety would be number one. You can agree with that. Um, what are you really trying to tell me? Well, I'll put it differently. You are would agree, let me finish my question. You would agree that in order for an officer to save you or to help you, that officer must be able to help him or herself. Yes. Now you mentioned um, that you on March 2nd <coughs> observed the fire in Capitol Block A? Yes, sir. Now, you say the fire was at the front door? Yes, sir. Um, the information we received is that the fire was at the back at the of back. Capitol Block A. I couldn't have seen the back door from where I was. Right, so that's what I was going to ask you. How, how would that have been possible for you? There's to have only seen the door front? I could have seen is the front door. And your evidence is that there was a fire at the front door? Yes, sir. <laughs> 